In today's video, my buddy Cody's going to go through the five most important pressure washing chemicals, where to get them, how to sell them, and how much to charge for using them. And if you stick around until the end, he's going to give you two additional chemicals that 90% of your competition don't even know exist. So that we can offer these niche cleaning services to your customers. But if you're looking to start a pressure washing business and you're not sure what chemicals to use, how to mix them, how to clean every service on a residential job site, property protection, or how to set up your equipment, check out the how to wash course. It'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So let's start with number yeah. one, the most important chemical that everybody needs with regards well, to starting fresh washing business it's it's your lifeblood like it's it you've this is almost goes without saying you got to have bleach okay so bleach is what we use it is industry standard for cleaning say it with me organics okay so when you go up and, and, and quote jobs and driveways and roofs and you're out there quoting and bidding and you're running your website and you're trying to get all these leads the lead generation is mostly going to come for organic removal and what that is, is mold, mildew, bacteria, algaes, all the things that can grow at the microbial level. I'm on my back porch and it's pretty clean because I washed it like two weeks ago and I killed my TV in the process like a rookie. Um, but all that stuff is organics. OK, we cleared some land. We built a building, whether it's a house or whatever it is. And Mother Nature wants to take that back. And so her first wave of attack is the little stuff. And that's what bleach is for. It's going to kill all that stuff, sanitize. And it's going to just allow you to get the surface clean without using any pressure. So that's why we're able to kind of soft wash low pressure is because the bleach is going to do all the work breaking down the organic material. You got to have bleach. You, 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 if you run out of bleach, you're done for the day. One of the most important things that you teach, Cody, that I really love is when you say that, you know, it's not just going to kill the organics on the house. It'll kill the organics on anything that it lands on. So safety precaution with regards to bleach is watering vegetation and things of that nature, right? Yeah. And a lot of new guys and people coming in that, you know, even homeowners, they're like, bleach is bad. You know, they're freaking out about it because they don't understand that we're using on a house wash such a diluted ratio. We're able to control our ratios with the metering valve, with the batch buster, if you're soft washing or if you're downstreaming, it's kind of automatically diluted. Um, but yeah, it's very, very diluted on the house wash. Now, as we crank up ratios and some of these other things we could clean, roofs and stucco and brick, things where we're cranking up past 2%. Yeah, we got to be super careful because it don't know the difference between algae and, and nasty vinyl siding, right? And the petunias out front of Miss Susie's house. Bleach don't know the difference. So you got to be careful. Take your precautions. But as long as you're following your steps, I think the last uh, bush or shrub that we damaged was like 2000 and I mean like, 15 it was a long time ago so but we're very careful we're very meticulous and uh we've got steps and processes to make sure that we don't damage we only want to kill what we want to kill we don't want any collateral damage we did have a question with regards to percentages the bleach that we're putting on is diluted to a certain amount depending on what surface that we are cleaning so what do you recommend not kill plants or grass well you zero percent if you don't want to kill plants or grass or anything right there's not a percent that you can hit that's like, okay, from here down doesn't kill plants or gra No, it doesn't work that way. If it's butt naked hot outside and it hadn't rained in two weeks and you do a house wash at one and a half percent, about where we want to wash a house at one, one to two percent, depending on how nasty it is. Anything o over zero is not good for vegetation or anything. So uh, the trick there is to watch your overspray, right? Try to minimize overspray and runoff and things like that. And then if you do have any overspray, you just keep that stuff rinsed off and, and flood it down. So house wash range, one and a half percent brick stucco. You go up to about two to three percent roof cleaning. We go five to six percent. So we're changing these ratios, but it, there's there's not a number in there where it's like plant safe. You just got to do your due diligence. Make sure you flood everything. Dilution is the solution for pollution. Keep everything diluted. Now, if you guys are still struggling with what percentage of bleach to use on different types of surfaces or how much bleach you need to be using, be sure to check out Quote IQ's mixing calculator. You can use it for free in the resources section of Quote IQ, and I'll leave a link for it in the comment section and the description of this video. And then you're gonna be able to put in all the metrics you need to figure out how much bleach you need in order to cover concrete or houses or whatever the surface is that you're cleaning. Um, the second most important chemical to talk about in today's video is surfactant. And I have a jug right here, Cody, of Southern Draw right there. there. So, Cody, why is surfactant important? Why do we need it? What services do we need it to clean? All that kind of good stuff. Well, here's where I'll, I'll be uh, honest, okay? You don't need surfactant, but 
you need surfactant. And so what do I mean by that? Well, if you run out of soap, I would never run out of surfactant and be like, well, we're done for the day. We can't work anymore. I, you can still work, but the reason you need it, and we'll put big air quotes, but you do, you do need it, is because if you don't run any soap of some kind, you're going to spend more money on the SH. You're using more bleach because you're not opting to put a soap in the mix. What the surfactant does is it makes the soap, the, uh, the SH sticky, the bleach sticky, so that it'll stay on the surface and do its job. If you don't, right, you don't put anything on there, it's just as viscous as water, so it's running off, which means you got to keep recoding, uh, and you'll wind up actually spending more money on SH than you would have in total if you had just put some surfactant in there. So it, it's sticky. It also increases your dwell time. It's got a cover scent in there, which is not necessary, but it is nice. And it keeps your mixture wet longer so it doesn't dry as quickly in the, the summer. So need, yeah, you know, you can get away with not using it, but it doesn't make any mathematical sense to not use a surfactant because it's saving you money. And look, if I could wash a house, if I could clean a roof with, say, 25 gallons of bleach, if I'm doing it right and using soap, and then if I don't have any surfactant and it takes 35 gallons, you know, not only did I go the wrong way mathematically for my spend, my cost of goods, but I also sprayed more bleach. So the more bleach we spray, the more chances of screwing up stuff at the ground level as far as vegetation. So there's kind of another reason there. I do want to talk a little bit about uh, negatives with regards to surfactants, like, you know, the things that could go bad. Because, Cody, some people think that I can just dump a whole bunch of Dawn dish soap and a bunch of, uh, you know, SH or sodium hypochlorite or bleach, as we call it. Yeah. Um, and can you kind of talk about some of the negatives of using things that really shouldn't be used um, in bleach? I can't remember who I was talking to, but this was just like two or three days ago. Maybe been a homeowner. I can't remember. They're like, yeah, we put some Dawn and some bleach in there. I don't know why people default to Dawn because it's like the only thing that you don't need to put in there. If you take a bottle of Dawn and flip it around and read the bag, it clearly says in all caps, do not mix with bleach. So it will create a reaction. It ain't going to probably kill you, but strong, a lot of Dawn and a, a strong mixture of bleach will make a gas. So you don't want to do that. Um, don't just go grabbing crap on the, the laundry aisle either. There are certain laundry detergents that we've used before and had pretty good success with them, but they're not, none of them are going to go as far as a professional made soap that's made for SH mixture, made for soft washing. And the other thing is some of that stuff doesn't rinse clean. Okay. It's made to go in the laundry, in the washing machine. Can you use it? Kind of, yeah, you can kind of use it, but it's not going to rinse off a of glass like our stuff will. So our stuff rinses extremely well off a of glass. It leaves like a, almost a pure finish. So that's one reason I've never really got into water fed pole stuff is because our surfactant is so freaking good. It almost looks like perfectly clean glass. Uh, so yeah, there's some advantages to using a engineered soap. All the chems that we have guys, Justin can, can attest to this Aaron, if he's still watching, Three years ago, I could have picked up the phone and said, hey, make me a lineup of Kim's. I didn't do that on purpose because I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do. I wanted all of our stuff to be engineered one at a time, how I wanted it to perform. And we own all of those blends. It's They're specifically niched down, and that's why they work. Like, they're fire. Some of that stuff, uh, we're going to talk about one here in a second that's absolutely revolutionary because it's not just, hey, you guys make that, put my label on it, and we'll sell it. We don't roll like that. So, Make sure you're using good soap. It does make a difference. You'll see a, a big difference. And then you'll probably see a difference at the end of the year on how much is spent on bleach. I do want to attest to how high quality this soap is. You might think, oh, it's just a soap, right? That's why people think, oh, I could just throw Dawn in there. I could just throw whatever I got in the house in there. One time, and I told you this, Cody, before, but one time I, I dropped basically a whole gallon of one of these in the back of my truck. And to this day, the truck will still suds up. And this happened like years ago. So the soap is really good. For anybody who's hoping to get bang out of their buck for soap and surfactant and hopefully hoping it sticks on roofs and things of that nature, trust me, this is top quality stuff and as cody said formulated for rinsing off windows that's one thing i had a house one time and i think i, I think i was at the time i didn't know any better i was mixing bleach and, and dawn dish soap but i hit the windows i left and i actually got a call back because the guy said hey my windows are like super spotted up so that's a you know cause for concern that's something that you can call back on um is spots on windows right cody yeah and all of our stuff is concentrate so that one gallon makes a bunch right it's it makes 16 gallons or uh, 10 gallons if you want it real thick. So yeah, it, a little bit goes a long way and you don't need a whole lot, but you don't want to run with any because like, like I said earlier, you're just going to be wasting bleach.
Right. So check it out, southeastsoftwash.com. Get yourself some surfactant. I want to go back to bleach one more time, Cody, because I don't think a lot of people know where to get it. I I forgot to ask this question. Where can we get bleach if, let's say, that we don't know where our local supplier is, we don't know where anything is? Where should we go? Well, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, and go to the pool aisle and get 10% uh, sodium hypochlorite liquid in the jug for the pools if you're, like, in a pinch. Here's what you guys need to do if you're – you know, trying to find like a real vendor, Google uh, industrial chemical vendors near me and see what comes up through that. Use some Google foo there. If you run into a dead end and you just can't figure it out, uh, Google a company called Univar, U-N-I-V-A-R. Give them a call and tell them what you're trying to do, your pressure washer, and they, they're the nation's largest manufacturer of bleach. So they'll be able to kind of tell you who in your region may have uh, some SH, like we sell it, we pump it for you which is just much easier. You show up, we fill up your tank, you pay us, you leave. You don't have to fool with the barrels. Uh, but worst case scenario, they'll be able to get you somebody, whether it's barrels or a fill-up station, you know, in your region. So they've got over 400 tanker trucks in the U.S. that just haul bleach. So there's bleach somewhere. You just kind of got to find it. Um, if you can't, if you got a local pool supply place, go and ask them, you know, hey, where you guys get your SH? Because they're buying it somewhere. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to cover that because it's, sometimes it's not very well known where you can get the best bleach. And we're not talking about Clorox just off the shelf. Uh, higher so Clorox end. and everything at the laundry aisle in the store is going to be 6%, 5 or 6% SH uh, is what's typical. What we're talking about, industry standard, is 12.5% bleach. So it's double the strength of what you can get at the laundry aisle. And it's actually cheaper to buy it that way because... It's, it's usually cheaper per gallon, and it's twice the strength. So it's actually cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So that's what you want to try to find. If you can only get 10%, that's fine, too. 10% is, is still plenty strong. You'll be able to dilute that down and do everything you want to do with it. Excellent. So, so far, we've covered two different chems. First was bleach. Second was surfactant. Both incredibly important. Now, Hatchy's already on to us. He says, what about gas station parking lot oil stains? Our next chem will actually treat these. So, Cody, what is the third most important chemical that we need to know if we're going to be pressure washing? We were talking about making this video, and uh, it's, it's kind of hard for me to pick a few, but I think degreasing jobs is probably... Once you leave the organics realm, right, the next biggest category of money out there for, for guys that are washing is probably degreasing okay so food grease gas stations oil change places it, this is the the back side of a burger king here so i cleaned that and you can see we sprayed dynamite degre it's a grainy photo but it's dynamite degreaser we sprayed it and then we ran over it with a surface cleaner so all that on the right side there is the original food grease and i love doing restaurants that reason food grease cuts pretty easy anyway so it's always like a big wow factor dynamite's like way overkill for food grease, but I like, I like overkill. Um, it works really, really good. There's another example. I think that's from a Sonic. Yeah. You can see the Sonic there, the little poles up there in the, the corner treated all of it down. Now this was, these are cold water. Like you can get really good results with, uh, even a cold water machine and a good concentration of dynamite degreaser. So dumpster pads, gas station fuel islands, lots of places out there you can get money doing degreasing. And Dynamite Degreaser is it's one of, if not the best degreaser in the market. So Cody, like you mentioned, you wanted to prioritize things that can make guys the most amount of money. Degreaser, obviously a great opportunity to make some money. Is this could we also use degreaser to remove oil stains from just um, concrete driveways from residential? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm always okay, looking for those when I'm quoting residential because it's an upsell. And even if they don't go with the upsell, I still want to I want to put it out there and they got to say no to it. Right. Because then they right. can't try to say, well, you didn't clean my driveway. Yeah, I did. I did. But there's an oil stain. See, I want to have that. Uh, the upsell is the caveat. Like if they don't mm -hmm. pick it, that's fine. But they don't get it. You know, you, right. hey, you can get a combo meal or you can just get the sandwich. But if you just order the sandwich, you can't say nothing about no drink and fry when you get up there because you just got the sandwich. So. Yeah, I love that covering yourself because early on in my business, and I'm sure you had the same experience, Cody, it was like, I didn't really know how to treat oil stains that well. I didn't really know what a rust stain was or how to treat it that well. And so whenever I was like, you know, quoting it, I'd be, I would be like, you know, I'll just try to get it up as best as I possibly can. Because what else right. do you say when you don't know how to clean it, right? That's right. And and look, you can't overpromise on degreasing jobs because concrete's porous. It's been sitting on there forever. It's going to always probably have a shadow there. Um, which is one reason commercial degreasing is great because they kind of get that, that it's, 
it they don't care as much because they know that it's just a fact of their business model that grease is going to get on the pad right we're just maintaining it and it's got to look better it's going to look a thousand times better and then in two weeks it's going to be dirty again residential you need to really explain hey i don't have magic on the truck back here like i i haven't found any magic yet but when i do this with this product it's going to look a million times better so i always try to kind of caveat my way into letting them know that i'm not going to pour you a brand new concrete pad we're going to do what we can do it's going to look better and a lot of the times it actually does look like a hundred times like you you would not know that oil had ever been there, but I've also done some where I was like, yeah, you know, it could look could look a little bit better. You just can't tell. I'll show you guys one here that, you know, there was there was really nothing that didn't look perfect on this one. That's uh, you got to look real close to find a haze there. So that's what we're shooting for. But you got to have the Kims to be able to do that. Reggie Bryce said dynamite degreaser is fire he always over under promises and over delivers i think that's a beautiful way to do business but, but with that said let's get into the number four best chemical for pressure washing cody and um have you released the product for this one already i have last week like wednesday <laughs> well it's gonna be a great time for us to talk about it, All right, tell them what it is, yeah. Cody. <laughs> yeah that right there i don't know if you got some photos you want to throw up but let me say there we go wood wizard yeah and I hate wood cleaning, but we roll out chemicals slowly. I don't just like, yeah, just put something out there and it'll work and we can start selling chem. I don't I don't care about that. I'd rather it be right and play the long game. So this is a so there you go. This is a sodium metasilicate based wood cleaner. And if you guys know, if you're in the know, there's a couple of chems that are really good for wood cleaning and they all sort of have a different chemical profile. You got sodium percarbonate based cleaners. Uh, sodium metasilicate based cleaners, which is what Wood Wizard is. There's there's other ones out there. You can use SH for wood, okay? And I'm I'm not gonna say you can't because for years I've said you could. It's just so freaking risky because you can damage the wood fibers. The pH will be all off balance on the the wood itself, the the the, the substrate. Like we're screwing it up, we're furring up the wood. Uh, the color <laughs> we did a wood fence one time. Down in Auburn, Alabama, we were young. We were rookies, man, and, and it looked good. But <laughs> like an hour later, it looked like a sheet of notebook paper. Like it was white, so we screwed that fence up because we used too hot of a mix. Bleach is just not good for wood. So we really have never tried to do a ton of fences and decks and stuff because I just hated doing them. But um, now that we've got something that is quick and easy, and you get a really good result out of it, Wood Wizard's pretty fire. So apply it 20 minute dwell time, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute dwell time, depending on what you want to do. What I would do if it's a big old long fence, I just apply from one end to the other and then go check a few emails and then start back where I started at and rinse with a wand and a white tip, but you don't have to get like right on it. This does most of the work. There's another one. Now it was still wet. This is a completely different job. That's at another location here in town once it dries you know that was a good question guys were asking like well, what does it look like after it dries so we went back so that's after that dried and that's what you're looking for is that natural wood color okay that was 48 hours after we did the cleaning but going from that you know you can make anything look really good on on wood surfaces while you're there because it's wet and it looks really good so the big question is what does it look like two days later and that's what we're shooting for is that good natural wood color no busting a part of the fibers and damaging the surface like that we don't want to use it really any high pressure a little bit of pressure just a good rinse down yeah so this is going to open up the market for a lot of wood cleaning jobs you want to be able to clean it without having the butthole pucker factor of using sh especially on somebody's cedar shake house so spray it down let it dwell, rinse it off, and it's it's pretty amazing. That sodium metasilicate, guys have been using that for a couple of years. It's kind of like the most popular wood option, and we wanted a liquid version of that, so you don't have to worry about mixing it and powders and doing all that crap. You just get it. It's ready to use. The next chemical that we're going to talk about was a recent release, and it's been you know making a lot of headlines, Cody. Uh, and this is a great upsell, and we've talked about I think we made one video on this, but tell them what number five is. All right, number five, pretty wild. It's it's basically magic. Like it, it's pretty close. So, uh, oxidation cleaning. And look, with some of these, we're getting into restoration jobs, but they're they're perfect add-ons for pressure washing. So, this is a green metal roof, 
uh, and it was that one there. It's supposed to be green, what you see, and it had oxidized to, so much it looked tan. We sprayed that on. We let it dwell. We literally just rinsed it off with, like, garden hose pressure. Wild. Go back to that other vinyl one if you can. Yeah, I did that yesterday. So that video is on my channel. Uh, we're going to be going back to do the whole house, but I did me a little section yesterday. I wanted to get a good clip. Sprayed it on and rinsed it off with a 12 volt okay i didn't even use freaking pressure washer so i was there doing the job i was there like 10 minutes i sat there another 30 minutes letting it dry so i could get that after photo but man oxidation removal has never been this easy it's actually never been really even possible at this level this is hardy plank uh siding cheaper grade of paint that oxidized we sprayed it on and we freaking rinsed it off and that's what you get so this is pretty wild dude. we we've got a lot of guys that love ox knocks because it's so it's so impressive to be able to go out and restore somebody's paint you know they're ready to spend five six seven thousand dollars on a repaint and we go out there and for twenty two hundred dollars we're deoxidizing it it ain't no work we're just spraying it down rinsing it off and the homeowner's getting 90 95 percent of what they got out of a paint job what they would have gotten out of a paint job and we're there for, a, you know, a morning. And so we're able to charge a quarter to a third or, you know, 40% of what they were ready to pay. So from the homeowner's perspective, it's a huge savings for us. It's a, it's a, it's a big profit margin. So we love Ox Knox. It's, it's pretty new, pretty revolutionary. There's nothing really like that out there. So very cool. Kind of another thing that we talked about when we made that oxidation video, Cody, was uh, pricing. So, you know, Joshua said, how much percentage do you upcharge for restoring oxidation? I believe you mentioned, like, it was the cost of their next best alternative, right? And do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, so, like, we, we've had customers that – I got a guy – I ain't going to try to dig through my phone, but he, he did a $4,100 metal roof – oxidized used ox knox think he said he used about a case and a half of ox knox so about you know six gallons total which made a whole bunch to concentrate sprayed it down rinsed it off and it was a four thousand two hundred dollar check and he had a lift rental in there as well so you know probably 400 bucks for the lift rental so he cleaned up you know easily he was way over thirty five hundred dollars a profit and he did it in a half a day you know like a four hour work time so you got to think like if, if I can charge them X, but their next best alternative is to literally, literally re-roof the house. Well, that's a huge savings for them. We had a guy in the chemical group the other day and I kind of had to, you know, gracefully coach him because he was complaining about buying a gallon of ox knox and come to find out he'd only quoted the, the homeowner like $300. I'm like, dude, oxidation starts with a comma in it. Like it's, that's a, that's a specialty service that, you don't need to be going out there doing oxidation jobs for less than seven, eight hundred dollars if you're in the middle of nowhere. If you're in a real place, you know it needs to be a grand or over. It could, it could be the, the sky is really the limit with some of this stuff because if it's a fifty thousand dollar re-roof and you can deoxidize it for, you know, ten thousand dollars, well, crap. I mean, who wouldn't do that? So understand your your market, understand your abilities, and don't shoot yourself in the foot. I guarantee you're not complaining about the cost of a couple of gallons of Oxnox if you're making, you know, $2,800 that morning. So make sure you're charging accordingly. And if you guys want to get four out of the five chemicals that we talked about in today's video, check out southeastsoftwash.com. Right, Cody? That's right. Hey, we got everything you need over there. We've got some other ones we didn't talk about here, but gutter cleaning stuff. We've got red clay stuff. We've got another really cool. Yeah, he's got the whole wall back there, dudes. This one is cool. Here's an example. This is a customer's photo. He used Mud Mayday here. Uh, this was in the inner circle a couple of days ago. I just screenshotted it. Mud Mayday and cleaned up that driveway. Looks freaking amazing. Look at that two thousand dollar job. Okay, so he probably used you know le less than a case for sure of Mud Mayday, and dude made two grand. Like, what you gonna say to that? It's 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 hard to beat, man. It's it's really fun too. This is a new one as well the wood cleaning kim and this one is monumental so for all of your uh stone surfaces monuments tombstones government buildings this is a spray and walk away deal we just sprayed the baby jesus down and left and uh it cleaned it up looks amazing 10 days later so very cool that's a new product for us as well so we've got uh, a complete lineup whatever you need we probably have it
Cody, thanks so much for uh, joining us on today's video. You guys check out the links in the comment section description. And until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.